everyone. It's Dirk here from HA Photography on beautiful Vancouver Island. Uh, we're here today to go over some basic photography skills. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. I'm a full-time working photographer. I do mostly commercial and family portrait photography. And why photography? I love photography, as I'm sure you do too. Uh, it, uh, it is so rewarding because it is something that uh, amateurs can do as well as full-time professionals. And I've discovered that the learning never stops. There's always something new to learn about photography. It's one of the things that keeps me going on with photography. So what are we gonna learn here today? Well, we're gonna learn some basic components of composition. And comp what is composition? Composition is the elements that will help build your photograph and make it a stronger photograph. So what are some basic components of composition? Let's start off. In this picture here, you're going to see this lovely woman uh, jogging on the beach with a lovely green material. And you'll notice that there's some lines on the, uh, on the photograph. And most cameras, and iPhones have the ability to put a frame within your camera, in, within your viewfinder, pardon me. And this frame is really useful. I still use this tool all the time today. It allows me to instantly see where the thirds are. And you'll see these sort of nine components. And you'll see that this woman is not in the center of the photograph. She is in one of the quadrants. And um, you will, I still use this tool a ton, as I mentioned, to help compose my images. We can also use this tool when we're doing landscapes and not just people photography. So we may not necessarily want to have our horizon and our, uh, say, our waterline be right smack dab in the middle of the photograph. We may want to take uh, our camera and point it down a little bit or point it up and, uh, and have use that one third sort of rule. Let's look at some other examples of uh, using the rule of thirds. In this image here, we have uh, a gentleman sitting in the restaurant. And again, we can see those lines that are on the photograph that we s would see in our viewfinder. And he is placed in the one-third quadrants. And it's not just for people, but we can use this for other subject matters, like the, the uh, cheetah we have in this image. And uh, it allows us, again, just to provide a more, what's the word we're looking for? It just, it's, it, it provides more interest to the viewer by using your rule of thirds. So when you're out photographing, I want you to consider using the grid that's in your camera and aligning your subjects within one of those lines of the, um, uh, the quadrants. And upon reviewing, I'm sure you'll see that your images look much stronger. So moving on to another component, let's talk about leading lines as a way to uh, to build stronger images. In this image, uh, we see um, the freshly mowed grass uh, has provided some lines pointing to that tiny little poor house in the background. <coughs> Pardon me. And those lines are very strong, powerful tools. They take our eye straight uh, to that house. And we can find lines in all sorts of things to help lead our eye through the image. Uh, let's look at another example here. Um, this here is a shot of uh, some children picking up some mail. And we can see sort of the wood trim uh, out being out of focus, and that line then takes us to the girls that are in focus. And it's a very strong element that takes our eye to where we want our viewers to see, the, to, to the subject matter. And uh, so, and it should be noted too, that uh, not all lines are necessarily straight in leading lines. In this next image, uh, we see this lovely mountainous road, and our eye naturally wants to go to the bottom left-hand side and follow those curves uh, that are in this mountain road. And it takes us all the way up to the top of the image where we actually see the vehicles. And it's a great example to say that not necessarily all leading lines are straight lines. So again, when you're out looking uh, to take photographs, see if you can find some strong leading line elements to, uh, to help build the composition of your photograph. Our next, uh, our next little topic here is symmetry and patterns. Our eyes love to see patterns. They're drawn to them. And there's lots out there for us to capture. In this image, we see here the, uh, the two zebras 
they are almost a mere, Im of e mere image of each other, pardon me, uh, as well we have the patterns of the zebra that is really enticing and draws us to the image. So again, when you're out looking for images to take, look for patterns, and they're everywhere. In this image, we have this uh, close-up of the cactus, uh, where we see the repeated patterns of the, um, those pointy bits that you don't want to touch. Uh, so uh, it'd be better to take a picture of it than <laughs> actually touch it in this case. But look for those patterns. And um, again, we can also say that not necessarily all patterns are straight lines. In this lovely example, We've got symmetry and patterns working together. Uh, we've got the lovely staircase that's round and, uh, and the repeated patterns of the stairs that draws us in. Look for those components when taking your image. And I would add something else that uh, we like to see. We like to see geometric shapes, particularly circles and triangles. They're very strong compositional tools. If you're posing a subject, uh, see if you can sort of employ some triangles into the images or look for triangles or circles. Very strong elemental aspects of building a good image. So another component we can discuss here about composition is viewpoint. Most often times when we're taking images, uh, we're taking them at camera height. So I employ you to maybe look at different, a different components and different aspects. Maybe get down low, as in this image here. And this image is a great example of uh, changing our viewpoint will make for a much stronger image. Um, this image here particularly employs several aspects. We've got the strong leading lines of the, uh, of the um, yellow lines on the road, and it's taking our eye all the way to the back, and the viewpoint being down low, I think, is much more interesting than it would be if we were just standing up. In this next image, we've got uh, this lovely picture of the dandelion, and someone's gotten down very low and has decided to shoot up, and looking up at the dandelion, dandelion from, from a low perspective. So again, I think this image is much more interesting because of the fact of its different viewpoint. So again, when you're out photographing, look for different viewpoints. And sometimes looking up is in this next image of this staircase. And again, this image employs a number of the composition uh, pieces that we were talking about. We've got uh, leading lines, we've got uh, repeated patterns, and in this case, the photographer just pointed their camera straight up and, uh, and saw this lovely image. So look up, look down, get up, get down, uh, to find some new, different ways of looking at your subject. This next component, uh, we're going to talk about uh, backgrounds and how backgrounds can provide uh, an interesting component to your, uh, to your photo. And uh, in this sample image here, we've got this gentleman with, uh, with some telephone uh, poles growing out of the back of his head. This may have been intentional, and this could be just a fun image, and that's absolutely fine. But I think the important component here is actually to consider that the photographer meant to do this. And, uh, and so really what I'm getting out of this is to be mindful of what's in the background. Look what's behind your subject. Does it tell an interesting story? Is it perhaps uh, getting in the way of, of the message you want to you wanna put out? So be mindful of, uh, of, of what is in the background. In, in this next, next example, pardon me, um, you'll see this lovely little girl and she's got this thing out of focus growing out of the back of her head. And uh, you can see that the photographer just moved uh, one step to the left or right and was able to resolve that issue. So it can be really easy to resolve these, uh, these issues of what's in the background. The important thing is to look and see what's there. This next image is a lot of fun because uh, here we someone, the photographer, decided to actually use this element. We've got this woman with um, a fountain head growing out of the back of her head. Now, I am feeling quite certain that uh, this was intentional, and I think it works really well. So really, the, the takeaway from this is to be mindful. Think about what's in the background, and uh, decide if it's going to help your image or, or not. And if it's not, then it's easy enough to you know, maybe take a step, find a different vantage point, that uh, removes that distracting element. OK, 
Okay, so our next uh, component in composition, we'll talk about cropping. Cropping is uh, generally done after you've taken your, your photograph, and you can do this on your iPhone or if you have some software on your computer that you allows you to do some cropping. And cropping is great because maybe we didn't use the rule of thirds uh, initially on uh, when we took the photograph. And as you'll see in this example here, uh, the surfer is in the middle of the uh, image, and the horizon line uh, is also in the middle of the image. And you can see with how this photographer cropped this image, they've been able to use those rule of thirds. We've now got uh, the surfer and the water line sort of all in that rule of thirds component. So it's a great way to enhance your image and make it even stronger. This next example uh, of cropping shows a butterfly and it's quite small initially in the photograph. And by cropping it, we were actually able to remove a lot of unnecessary uh, foreground and background and just really get a much closer image of, uh, of, uh, of the butterfly. So cropping can also bring your image, make your image larger. This next example uh, of the gentleman playing uh, chess here, the cropping here was used to eliminate some unnecessary details. Um, Unlike the butterfly shot, we have here some components. We've got the person in the back, which we didn't need to see the whole portion, portion of. And we've also eliminated a portion of the foreground person. And really the attention now is squarely on the chess player. So cropping can be used to also remove and, um, and put, again, attention on your main subject. So what did we learn about today? We learned about the rule of thirds and how it can make for a stronger image by uh, lining up your subject matter in one of the lines inside your camera. We learned how uh, leading lines can be a very strong uh, force in creating visual content and guiding your eye through the image. We talked about patterns and symmetry and how our eyes love to see patterns and it's a great way to catch your eye's attention. We talked about changing the viewpoint and uh, how we can uh, change that by just getting low, getting high, looking up, looking down, and finding new perspectives uh, to, uh, to look at your subjects. We also talked about being mindful of your background and uh, to either choose your backgrounds to help tell your story or to maybe just take a step or two uh, in one direction to remove uh, background items that are distracting. And lastly, we talked about cropping and uh, how we can crop our images to make our images even stronger by, um, again, using the rule of thirds and removing distractions or making your image larger or just by, again, enhancing the subject that you have. So those were the main components that we talked about. I encourage you now to go and grab your camera and go explore. Have fun, take lots of pictures, make lots of mistakes and because uh, we're going to learn from those mistakes and we're going to learn new things uh, about composition. I encourage you to also post your images on, uh, um, on a platform that the library will be working on so that we can see all those images and we can build a community of photographers that can also provide you critiques and feedback on your images. I want to thank you for being here today. This has been lots of fun. I hope that there has been some uh, useful information here for you. Uh, please uh, come back when we'll be learning more components of some basic photography. My name is Dirk Heidemann of HA Photography. It's been a pleasure being with you here today. Thank you so much.